Philippine living on $600 a month. Today, let's talk about a food budget. Are you hungry? Let's go. So when it comes to your food budget here, Philippine living on $600 a month, you'll find a wide variety of different supermarkets such as Robinson's, s and Market, and Pure Gold. Now these stores have all your basic necessities, so you should be able to do fine. They do have fresh meat cases and all of your typical everyday usage items, but they're not well stocked with Western items. They have a few like a half a aisle or one aisle or spotted around, but not very much so do not expect to go into these three locations and find a good variety of western products again there are some just that not not that many and also check the dates on on the cans that you pull off the shelf because they could have been sitting there for a while because filipinos typically don't buy western style products so another option would be to and i highly recommend is snr now, S&R is pretty much like a Sam's Club or a Costco back in the U.S. You do pay an annual 700 peso membership fee, but it's well worth it. Now, the items in here are exclusively, mostly, all Western, but there are some Filipino products. And you can just find such a variety here, but it is more expensive because everything is brought in from the West. So I highly recommend that you check this place out and keep watching because I'm gonna show you some tips on how to save money. So another great option for you and you absolutely should learn how to utilize this are your street vendors and your wet markets. Here you'll find just a total variety of all the daily staples that you think you might need. Usually it's cheaper than in the stores, at least in the food markets, and yes, everything is safe to eat. This stuff rotates and moves rather fast because there's so many people shopping here. And all you have to do is learn how to tell fresh vegetables and fresh fruit aside from those that are probably a little bit older. If I were you, I would recommend that you get to know a couple vendors in particular and try to stick with them. They'll usually give you the freshest because you're showing up every day or every other day or whenever it is that you're out and about doing your shopping and you're gonna find your budget is gonna stretch much further. The more that you can learn to eat Filipino, the more money you actually save. Sometimes you can even barter. It just depends how much you're buying. Now, the country's just full of bakeries dotted everywhere, so you'll always find fresh baked goods, breads, dinner rolls, cakes, things like that, so keep that in mind. And again, it's very inexpensive. The variety of fruits and vegetables here are endless, and you don't usually have to walk very far to find any. Now, inside the actual wet markets, as opposed to the street vendors, that's where you'll find really serious bulk items, ranging from your meats, fish, seafood, things like that. Again, it's generally cheaper in these places. Everything is typically sold by weight or by the kilo, and you'll never go without. There's just so many choices and options for you. And again, these foods are safe to eat. I eat them all the time. As long as you can tell and take a look at what looks fresh and what looks old. Here again, I would try to hook up and establish myself with one or two or maybe three specific vendors because the more they see you, the better they're gonna take care of you. Now again, all these foods rotate. They don't sit here very long because there's massive amounts of Filipinos here that are buying their food daily. So nothing really sits here very long it's always brought in fresh. They do keep it on ice. They'll display it on the tables for a little while so you can see it. And if the Filipinos can eat it and survive, you absolutely could also. Keep in mind, 
any bacteria that may exist on any of the foods, which could also exist in your supermarkets, you're gonna cook that away. So you shouldn't have any fear in saving yourself a whole bunch of money and buying locally at the wet markets. That's what I recommend. The difference between supermarket meats and wet market meats is almost zero except the price. There may be on occasion some specific unique items that you'll find in the wet market that you won't find in your supermarket meat cases. And the same is true with the markets. They may carry something that the wet markets does not carry, but that's gonna be rare. So stick to your budget and stick to the wet markets and street vendors for all your daily staples as far as your fruits, your vegetables, your meats, poultries, and seafood. I guarantee you won't regret it and you'll be smiling at your food budget. So you've kept to your food budget and now you wanna treat yourself, you know, just kinda of get out of the house and maybe not cook anything or maybe you're out and about. You can stay within your budget. There are a variety of different Western style fast foods and restaurants that are available. Most of them are in the malls, but there are quite a few standalones also throughout the country. Everything from pizza, burgers, and chicken, and ribs, and sandwiches, all kinds of things. Typically not very expensive, but it can get away from you if you're not careful. Definitely many choices. All your typical, your McDonald's, your Burger Kings, and a variety of other fast food locations just to step out and treat yourself every once in a while. So now here's some of the tips that I'm gonna show you. When I go and shop at s &R, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. A perfect example here is I bought this really nice peppered pastrami for about 500 pesos. So that's roughly 10 bucks. And it came with, oh, 10, 11 slices and they're real thick. So if I just leave this in my refrigerator, fresh deli meats typically have an expiration date. And I don't want to eat pastrami every day, but I like to have it, so I buy it in bulk like this. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to process it, and I'm going to portion them in individual slices and freeze them. As you can see here, I'm opening the bag. And then I went out and purchased me some small little bags, basically, and I kind of turn them into like like a roll-up, kind of like on a deli tray. If you go to a party and you see a meat and cheese platter, things like that. Now this stretches my food budget quite a bit. And it makes these individual thick pastrami slices come out to about a buck a slice, so that's not too bad. Again, I don't want to eat them all at once, but I like to have them as backstock in my freezer. So what I'll do is I'll roll them all up just like this, and then I'll put all the rolled up individual portions into a larger freezer bag, and I'll stick it in my freezer. All I have to do is go to my freezer, pop one out. It takes just a few minutes to thaw, or if you have a microwave, you can choose that option. Now along with some cheese and some fresh bread from the bakery, I'm having me a really killer deli sandwich for about a buck 20. That's not very much. So keep this in mind when you decide to go shopping and you're thinking about long-term food budget. This works great. I've been doing this for so long and I know that my food budget is very low, even though I can afford a lot more. And I do from time to time.
Now you can plainly see that I am portioning out this more expensive deli meat that I buy at SNR because I can't find these meats hardly anywhere else. In fact, I don't believe I've found it anywhere else. And it just stretches my food dollar a whole lot further. One thick slice of this ham I can have with my eggs at breakfast. I can make a sandwich in the afternoon or evening. I can add it to my baked beans or whatever I want to do. Just a smart idea. So another way that I like to stretch my food dollar is I like to cook in bulk. I never make just one meal, very rare. So I go out and I buy, let's say, a kilo and a half of beef, some carrots, some onions, some potatoes, and I like using the Mamacita's Calderetta mix. Now it's not a true Filipino Calderetta because I leave some ingredients out. So it's kind of like a modified beef stew. And I'm actually using beef for this project, but typically I like using Carabao, but it's a little bit more expensive. Now when you see how I process this and what I do with it, I don't know where that came from. Um, <laughs> the cook has to have a beer, sorry. And I'm gonna show you what I do with this. So here I am rendering down my beef, boiling it, tenderizing it, doing all those good things. I've already got my prep work done, my potatoes, my carrots, my onions, and the Mama Cita Calderetta mix, I take some of the hot water from the pot and I pre-mix it so I can loosen it up so it doesn't clump in the bottom of the pot. It just kind of helps dissolve it and has it prepped. Wow, oh, what's that? All right. If no one else is gonna think about me, I guess I gotta think about myself. So this is gonna be really good. And you should use these principles regardless what you make. Chili, spaghetti sauces, soups, stews, it doesn't matter. It'll help you stretch your food dollar. So now that I have the finished product, wow, look at that, how good does that look? I'm gonna go ahead and portion it into stackable, freezable <laughs> Tupperwares. Oops, what happened? Look at that, slopping it all over the place. Anyway, uh, this is a, a procedure that I've used long even before I came here to the Philippines. And it just, you get your, the meal that you want, you made it yourself, it's all fresh ingredients, and you can't go wrong. This is very simple to do. There's a little prep work involved, but you'll have ready to eat meals on a moment's notice. So I would say if this is what you want the next day, well, that's what I want this day. You take one out of the freezer and let it thaw in your refrigerator. So by the next day, you have an evening meal ready to go. And you can put some pondi sol or dinner rolls with it if you like. I recommend using rice with this also because a portion of rice is gonna cost you about 20 cents. Now you can't beat that. Oops. So think about this. With all the different dishes that you like to make, if you're not sure how to cook, simply go on a YouTube channel and learn how to cook. This is not hard. Very simple, very healthy, very practical, and definitely saves you on your food budget. This whole process probably took me about three, to three and a half hours. Well, if I'm just sitting around and my freezer is a little bit low on these wonderful homemade cooked dinners, I'll put on a game and watch it or a movie or whatever it is I'm doing. Maybe I'm doing some YouTubing while it's cooking, things like that. But definitely keep this in mind. It'll help you tremendously. And it tastes even better when you know that you made it with yourself with the ingredients that you like and that you're saving a whole lot of money. This is true in anything. So I've already had one bowl and I have another bowl in the refrigerator for later tonight. So I got a total of 12 servings. This is fantastic. It's food that I like, food that I made, and my food dollar has been stretched beyond imagination.
So even on a $600 a month budget, you can eat really well if you just do some proper planning, don't be lazy, and eat really good. It's not that difficult. Appreciate everybody coming out and watching. Thanks so much. Good luck on your budget. Peace out. And walang katapad.